I'll, I'll tell you when to, like, just introduce the panel and pass over to me. And then I'll, I'll do this. Yeah, that works. See, you gotta talk like this, yeah. killer. Let's do a like rap. This. Yeah, really close. Okay. Really close. Let's do a rap. A rap. A rap. Is that how we're gonna start? That's a rap. how we're gonna start this panel. Do you want me to drop uh, you a beat? <laughs> Let's not. Okay, cool. Okay. That's much better. So, uh, welcome to the panel. And yeah. So oh, we're standing. Ooh. Okay. I'm hidden uh, behind cool. the screen. Uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. So, welcome to the panel. Uh, I'm Killer. I am Matt from Fire UK. And I'm Nox Sight from the Nox Crew. And today we're here to talk about bringing Minecraft maps to life. We'll be showing some of our maps and describing how we built them. So in the meantime, I'm going to pass you to not say. <laughs> and hopefully inspiring you guys to make your own. So uh, actually, I want to know uh, how many of you guys in the audience have ever tried to make a map or currently try making a map? OK. Has anyone successfully made a map? and actually like finished it and released it. One. I have. One person. I haven't. <laughs> yeah, me, me. What, what? One person, okay. So what's the name? What's the name of your map? I finished, I finished it, I didn't release it though. Oh, okay, good. Then maybe you have some questions. Why didn't you release it? Um, I don't know, I just didn't get around to it. Okay, you didn't get around to it. That's fine, that's fine. Oh, you made a map. Go on, plug it. It's called Templar Mars on Mine Caves on uh, Supercraft Bros. Okay, so it's a map for a server. Awesome. All right, fantastic. Well, um, I'm more of a adventure map type of guy, and so are these two, right? Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, you're time lapsey. Yeah, yeah. And you've made adventure maps. I, I've made right? all three, so. <laughs> okay, so adventure maps, right? That's why we're here, right? 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 Who's making an adventure map? Okay, good, all right. So hopefully we can share some themes and stuff. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna go and talk about what I've made and hopefully some of you guys have heard what I've made. If not, doesn't matter, I'm gonna show you. So, uh, thank you. Here we go. So firstly, it's the Noxview Game Show. Uh, a long time ago, there was Paladin's Quest. That was my first ever map. That was three years ago, I think when Minecraft was kind of, four years ago, when Minecraft was starting out. Then Super Hole in the Wall, which was kind of recent. Joffrey's Chamber was last year. Um, and these are the four maps. I've, I've worked on other things, such as Christmas Adventure. Has anyone watched that on In the Little Woods channel? Yeah, I see a fan. <laughs> so, uh, and these guys actually worked on that map where I did more of the sound and story side, okay? That's kind of guy I am. I make sounds, stories, and characters. And I think those are the most important things about making a map, all right? That, doesn't, that might not apply to the kind of server maps, but that doesn't matter, right? Um, so I'm, do you want, yeah, cool, no, that's fine. Keep it on, keep it on, keep it on screen. Okay, I, uh, I, uh, I wanted to talk about stuff. So I'm gonna actually list exactly what these adventure maps are um, so, okay, Noxia Game Show is not an adventure map. It's actually a collection of maps for a YouTube series that is based on a game show. It's crazy. We've actually got a booth over there where you can play it and stuff. Uh, I'm not plugging. Hey, it's my panel and yours. Don't worry. You guys can plug too. I'm giving you, thank the, uh, you. I'm giving you guys permission. Actually, no, I'd like to thank Killer for setting up this panel. He's, he's the true host, not me. Actually, Nox, do you remember when I played the Nox Crew Game Show? Yeah. That went so well. And you lost. I did lose. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so Paladin's Quest was uh, way too early for its time. No. It was I'm bad. Kidding. It's, uh, it was bad. It was, it was an adventure map kind of based on the Skyrim questing system. So there was actually characters and uh, that talked to you in cutscenes and stuff. 
And there was a questing system where you could go around and talk to each character and, and do the whole story. So that was really cool. That was four years ago, and that was my first ever map. Um, Super Hole in the Wall was kind of recent. It, has anyone heard of Super Hole in the Wall? A lot of YouTubers played it. Uh, it was that kind of thing where you stood on the middle platform, and then massive walls started moving towards you. There was a lot of music, sounds, wacky walls, that kind of thing. And then uh, and you had to dodge them, and it was crazy. Uh, and then Joffrey's Chamber, did anyone watch Joffrey's Chamber? Again, a lot of YouTubers played that. Joffrey, that kind of thing, where you're stuck in a chamber, someone's talking to you. In a lot of my maps, people are talking to you. It's kind of weird. Um, but anyway, I want to show you a clip of Joffrey's Chamber and the kind of thing that I like to see in adventure maps. So, Killer, do you want to totally tab out and show it? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the uh, something. Uh, oh, okay, okay. I haven't got a name for it yet, but I do know it's got to sound really epic to, to you know, to suit the look. But this. This is where you learn things, like how to fight. Real pretty, don't you think? I, I kind of wanted to give it this menacing, evil look, but keep it quite homey at the same time, you know? Interior design was always my speciality. So, this is the way the tutorial room works. It's going to spawn an incredibly, unbelievably, humongously massive amount of horrendously hideous monsters, which you'll most likely wee yourself at the sight of. But that's not necessarily the point of this room. It's more to so kind of um, introduce you to the monsters you'll be fighting later in the game, you know? See, I got that from this book I read once on uh, game design and how gradually teaching your player stuff is the proper way of doing it. Although, I kind of skimmed it, to be honest, and that was quite a long time ago. I don't think I remember much, but who cares? My game, my rules, and my masterpiece. Anyway, Joffrey, because I'm feeling ever so slightly evil at this moment, I think we're going to start with one of the most hideous, humongous, terrifying abominations of a creature that no man can bear to stand the sight of. Prepare to fight the bite! Oh, bugger. Um, that's not a bite. At all, actually. Uh, sorry. Um, well, that kind of ruined the whole build-up. I think something must have went wrong. <clears throat> One sec. Okay, uh, j just kill it anyway. It should spawn the bites now. Oh my god, they're so terrifying! Kill them, Joffrey! Kill them! <laughs> Thank God for that. Those little things seriously freak me out. All right, careful now. They're only going to get tougher from here on out. Now, this next little thing quite literally gives birth to new little minions ever so often. Obviously, if you keep them standing for a while, your problems are only going to get bigger, little missy. So, let me introduce you to a little something I call a Hacha! <laughs> Okay, so that was uh, a little preview of the third installment of a Joff uh, the Joffrey's Chamber adventure maps that I released quite a while ago. And I'm actually working on that map still. And, uh, and it's going to be released very soon. So that's the kind of idea that I like to see in adventure maps. It's a little bit of story, a little bit of character, and I base myself around sound. Uh, recently, well, it wasn't recent, it was last year, they introduced resource packs uh, that you could use sounds in, right, that you could install sounds in, 
and someone could uh, install it just like a texture pack, but it has sounds. So I did, what I did was, you know, add a character and people talking to you. So the idea there is that it's quite interactive, all right? What you're doing, the guy is, um, is reacting to what you're doing, okay? So does any, has anyone tried to, like, make sounds and put them in an adventure map before? Okay, that's not enough of you. That is appalling. Oh, wait, one person. Is that, was that a hand? Okay. I highly recommend everyone to try out making sounds. All you have to do is like download something like Audacity, get a microphone, make a load of funny noises in it, and, uh, and then go on the Minecraft wiki and learn how to put it into the, into the actual resource packs. Easy peasy. It's a lot easier than people think. And it adds so much to your map. So, um, shall I stop talking? Like, we'll, we'll talk, you know, we'll, we've got more to go through, and we have a Q&A at the end as well, so. Um, yeah, do you want to take over? Okay, um, I'm Killer, and this is my map history. So, depending on what you've seen, you, these maps uh, have been around. Closer. Yeah, is that closer? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, does anyone recognize the maps? Any of them? Yeah? Okay. Which ones? Uh, is it the hive maps, or you recognize them? What's the one in the middle? What? SG5, yeah. Um, so here are the actual map names and where they've come from. These maps, a few of them I've worked on with these guys. For example, with the Fire UK time lapses, um, I used to be part of the team, and I used to be heavily involved in the creation of the actual maps as well, as uh, Mac will confirm. So, for example, the Dragon Temple and what else is there? Even the Mage City. You like um, fully? You like the one? The one of ones that like fully designed that Dragon Temple for Akane as yeah, well. Like, that, that that thing is like a crazy thing. Like I was talking about it at my panel yesterday, and like it was the only three-hour shot we had done at that time for a time lapse, and that's just a huge, huge building. That was difficult to build, though. It was very difficult, yeah. Um, especially on camera with how many people? With about fifty. I think there's about fifty or sixty people building that. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. The uh, cool thing about the Fire UK stuff is a lot of the main stuff is actually built off camera first and designed. And then we have all the server members come on, they take screenshots, and then they have to try and replicate it. Kind of like. Well, I mean, that's yeah. the way we do it for like the bigger builds. Obviously, the smaller stuff we kind of freestyle and things like that. But the big builds like that definitely has to be built first, so then they have something to work from. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, talking about adventure maps, um, for the last three years, I've been creating the Christmas adventure for in the Little Witch Channel. Now, this was done as a hobby. It wasn't paid for. It was just done for fun. And for year two, we decided to go a bit crazier with it. Uh, Noxite had just made a demo, which was Joffrey's Chamber 1, on a live stream. And uh, I had approached him, uh, asking him, would you do sounds for this adventure map? So. Uh, and I said, yeah, all right. Yeah. Cool story. End of story. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this led us to creating something which was aimed for kids. Uh, we didn't really want to include killing, and it was meant to be fun and Christmassy. So we didn't want to go with normal Minecraft. It was meant to be very heavily story-based um, as compared to other maps that you would have played before. And it was one of the only maps as well that actually had sound. It was one of the first ones other than Joffrey's Chamber. So it got pretty big, pretty fast. Um, I think number two or series one were the most successful ones. But every year, um, Every day there was a challenge uh, during the December for Christmas Advent season. And uh, yeah, we've been doing it since. So I'll talk about survival games in a second. Um, these were actually made with a rider. Uh, at a point, I actually. Who's, who's played survival games? Have you, and you played these maps? Come on. Who's played think? survival games? You know, you know. The big city that's like in ruins, the apocalyptic city. Everyone's played that, survival games too. Yeah. Come on, you're all liars. Well, anyway, I joined the team with the rider around survival games five. So I had inputs into creative decisions around that period. Um, we have some ex-server members here as well, sitting at the front um, that also took part in the other maps. But um, yeah, these maps were not designed as an adventure map, but they were designed for plugins. Survival Games 5 was actually designed with command blocks and uh, later ported over to a server, I believe. So I'm going to quickly show you a clip from a Christmas Adventure, uh, which will be here. 
And this will give you an idea of, uh, again, how we like to use voices and story to dictate our maps for us. Go on, Toby. Tub. Oh! Hang on, let me find it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <that way? laughs> oh, this side, okay. Bang, bang, oh. bang, bang. <laughs> a loud knocking was heard downstairs at such an ungodly hour that no one bothered to answer it for at least five minutes. <laughs> Eventually, the green adventurer woke up incredibly disturbed and shouted, When? Oh, when can I get my well-deserved beauty sleep? <laughs> bang, 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 bang. The knocking did not stop. The blue adventurer hopped out of bed and ran downstairs to get rid of whatever nuisance was sabotaging their beautiful mahogany door. Ah. Upon opening the door, a small little elf stood there in distress. You must help! My masters have been trapped in a temple just north of here. Oh no! We were traveling, you see, and my stupid masters wanted to explore. Stupid, stupid, stupid. I told them not to. They touched all the buttons, all the gold <laughs> ones, and now they're trapped. The mayor told me you would help. Trying to not look mad about his sleep being cut short, the blue adventurer agreed and swiftly headed upstairs to get dressed and whip every other adventurer into shape too. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's it. Whip Toby into shape. Hey, <laughs> hey, up, up <laughs> here. Hey, up the waterfall. Hello. Where what? are they? Oh, Whoa. there. Over there. Oh, there. Oh, yeah. The waterfall. What? Wait, was that? Also, was that Matt? That's Matt anyone... Phil. I don't know. I, I, Phil? Oh, <laughs> hey. Right. <gasps> we'll explain ourselves. This plonker managed oh, to get us- Oh, I'm the plonker, am I? You're the one that suggested it! <laughs> You're the one who convinced me that the cake was worth it. Well, it looked worth it. And was it worth it? Well, how did I know that it was going to turn into dust? So was the dust worth it? Look, I'm not saying it was worth it. I'm saying it's not all my fault. Yeah, but you still haven't said if the dust was worth it. No! No, it wasn't worth it. There, th that's it, right? There you go. Your fault. So, right, you down there, uh, we're in need of your help, obviously. Obviously. Uh, might be a bit tough, as it's sort of easy to get lost down there, though. Yeah, it's a bit like a maze. We struggle quite a bit to get up here in the first place. Basically, there's three golden buttons sitting around that will each light up one of those beacons down there. Yeah, oh. and if you light all three, this waterfall here will open up and free us. Then you can join us for a nice tea party. What, Ooh. with dust cake? Uh, sh sure, why not? Yeah. I like the sound of dust. So yeah, that is a bit, well, that's a clip that we're gonna show the voice acting that we used. Um, again, it's a bit more interactive than reading a sign, which you used to do in adventure maps. Uh, the artwork was done separately and that was done with a video, but it still made it a lot nicer uh, because it was for the YouTube series. Um, Thanks for including me there. That was a great clip of my, me voice acting. Do you that, remember? That I remember you Matt sitting voice in. Voice acting. It was great, right? I just remember you sitting in on Teamspeak, being like, "Yeah, Matt, can you do that like a you little just bit do that slower, a bit better, a bit, yeah, like, a not, bit better. not as bad. Yeah, not as bad as you just did it. Yeah, yeah. That's probably that's most of your advice to me, all the time. Um, with this though, uh, what we found is we decided to include a ton of guest YouTubers into the series. So you would have seen people like the Diamond Minecart, if you uh, watch the series around episode 20-ish. Yes, 21. 21-ish. Yeah. Um, who else was in that, if I can remember? Uh, Iballistic Squid, Will Barlow. Hat Films? Hat, Hat Films was in it. Slammer Cow was in it. Blue Monkey. Blue Monkey was in it. Um, and yeah, along, along there was a lot of guest days. Luckily, we knew a lot of these people, um, so it was easy to ask for the contact. But in general, if you want to make a series that's big, you need to find someone that can voice act. Or an adventure map, involve yep. your friends. Yeah, like Honestly. what we did. Honestly, doesn't have to, you know, anyone can voice act. You just no, no, we can't. No, you can. No. <laughs> you just you need ignore, a mic. ignore your surrounding. Forget all judgment. Just pick up that microphone and sing. No, no one wants to hear that. I la, think la, we're la, la. Yeah, no. Um, I'm going to quickly pass you over to Matt now, because okay, cool. he's starting to talk. Right, sweet. You can move it over to my slide. So, uh, I'm Matt from Fire UK, and basically what is going up on the screen right now is some of the things I've worked on. I'll let them load in a little bit, but if you recognize any of them at all, raise your hands up. Yeah, there we go. That's cool. So, does anyone out there know the names of any of these? I do. Do you want me to walk around? Oh. Can we, what? Can we, what? Can we we walk? We're else? walking. Has anyone got one? Oh, we're walking. Not you. Oh, no. Harry, Harry, you great. For them. Harry, you <laughs> have to tell me what not is up there. Yeah, see, exactly. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. Pick him. No, I'm not picking him. I'm asking him what's not up there. So, okay. So, 
If anyone knows what any of these are, I'm kind of more interested in the bottom pictures, but does anyone know the names of anything up there? Raise your hand if you do. Yeah? Okay. Yeah? That one, Mage City. Yeah, that's Mage City. So that's in the very middle at the top. Uh, that's one of our time lapses that we did at Fire UK. Again, it's not really an adventure map, but it's definitely talking, well, I'll talk about a little bit more about bringing Minecraft to life a little bit more. Any of the other ones that anyone knows the names of? Yeah? Hat Films Adventure. Yeah, yeah, that's an epic adventure. That's one of the main reasons I'm going to be talking about uh, adventure maps and bringing them to life today is uh, an epic adventure. And that is uh, the adventure map I did in 2012. Killer, if you can press the button to show the images or the names for the images. These are all of the names there on some of the things. So the top three is kind of a timeline of Fire UK. So you have 2011, 2012, and 2013. And for time lapses, we, it, there's a very difficult thing of bringing maps to life in a way like that because obviously, you know, there are these stationary architectural things that we film and we speed that up and we make it look cool. But I think it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, it is. It is right. But we have to take that and then make something that looks cool. So we kind of took our, you know, building skills in 2012 and we added a story to it. Now this was before the time of awesome sounds, so I had to use signboards basically like old school signboards where I'd write a story and then the guys from Hat Films in an epic adventure would go through their series, which was a nine month long series. It was insane how long that for a series was. And they'd go through and they'd read these signboards. And they made this character called the Overseer who was brutally mean. I feel like you could voice him very well in a way because he's just like kind of cheeky, but kind of cool. And he would just make up these ridiculous names for them. He would call Ross Pencilbeard and he would call like uh, trot, who'd call him like Blubber and all this kind of stuff. It was the, the silliest little names that he, like the Overseer would think would be really funny. And that's bringing Minecraft to life in a way, is adding these characters in and letting other people go in and do all those really cool things. And now, adventure maps in a way have come so far since then. Now with command blocks, resource packs, and things like that, it's interesting for me to look back in 2012 and how Minecraft was, because there was only some redstone devices and you're limited really to those signboards. So it's, it's really interesting, I think, to look back at it and just see how it's gone and comparing that to things like Joffrey's Chamber, yeah. which is way more kind of advanced in terms of using the command blocks, using the resource packs, and actually interacting with people. But even back then, it was still a really easy and cool way to bring Minecraft to life in a way. So I, I, I keep talking about sounds and stuff, but yeah. like, so sounds is not for everyone. It doesn't matter. Like Long before sounds even got implemented, Minecraft maps were being made full of stories and stuff. And what we, s what we mean when we say bring a Minecraft map to life is I s I've seen a lot of maps where people will build something and they don't understand the purpose of that themselves. And that's bad because then your map just kind of gets lost in this array of randomness. Um, you can build a house, right? A dirt house, for example, in the middle of nowhere. You pop a villager in it, all right? Fine, okay, cool. You got a dirt house with a villager. Let's do something cliche. Let's put a chest in his house and a little book and write his diary, all right? So that the player that's playing your map can go into the house, pick up the diary, and then read the story of why the villager is living in a dirt house in the middle of nowhere. Come up with something weird. But already, you've given that now a purpose of why it's there and an interesting story. And that is already bringing a little life to your map. And imagine now, if you build that city, for example, and every single room of that city has a person in it with a name and a purpose and an ambition. You've already now got an entire story in your city, all right? And that's, that's a life. That's life in your map. Yeah, okay? and that kind of is something that is really interesting for Minecraft because a lot of the time it's just a bunch of blocks sitting around doing nothing. But adding that little bit of personality, adding that little bit of story into a Minecraft map can really bring it to life. And I think it engages the players way more. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to play a little trailer for an epic adventure. Uh, this was actually for Minecon two years ago, so it's kind of uh, going kind of back in time a little bit to take a look at the very final trailer that we made for an epic adventure. Uh, so here we go.
Okay. So yeah, I like to do over the top epic trailers. The epic hat. The huge. The thing. Oh, sorry. Poop. <laughs> there we go. That works. They're the, they're the best ways of just uh, adding voiceover and stuff. But for me, really, this map was a craft of like love and time because really it took a stupid amount of time. It was nine months of building that it took us. We started in like the January and there was breaks in between and you know we just worked and worked and worked. And you it was you were building while they were filming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. While they were filming the series, we were still building and still going on and still building and coming up with new ideas. And I was actually writing jokes for the Overseer based on the things that were happening in their their series, which was you know pretty interesting. So it was a interesting way of doing it because I was kind of like coming up with stuff on the fly, but it was really cool. And it's it's really you know nice to look back at that. And I definitely want to you know maybe do something like that again sometime. I just want to say something. Um, it's like a compliment to you. Right, right, I don't know what's about to happen. And it, it's sort of something I face a lot as well. When someone asks me about making a map, they're always intimidated because they don't feel like they can build something like that alone or with like a couple of friends. Well, I did all of an epic adventure with like really two other people. Yeah. And that's why it took so long. But don't get intimidated by that. No, no. So, um, because yeah, it's epic, it's grand, but like to make a good adventure map, it doesn't have to be. No. You know, you know it doesn't have to be. As long as, you, as long as you're keeping that kind of sense of character and story, Matt's style is epic, right? So, Matt's cool, yeah. right? But um, one of the first adventure maps I ever played was Professor Griswold and the Redstone Keys. And that was four years ago. Does yeah, anyone yeah. remember that map? It's super simple. It's like super really simple, simple map, yeah. but it was yeah. the best map I played in in the time, yeah, and that's yeah. what inspired me to make a map. And it was yeah, dead simple, but yeah. it was the adventure, it was that sense of adventure that was like. And I mean, you could wow. do something really abstract, like almost like just cube rooms that tell stories as you go on. You could use like the storytelling devices from like Portal or something, you know, where you've just got this one voice and you're guiding you through these really almost empty rooms. That would be a really cool idea. And you know that sort of stuff is really easy to do. You don't need crazy building skills to do something like that. And you could tell a really engaging and personal story like that, I think, as well. So. Yeah. But like everything, with practice, you get better. When yeah, I joined Fire UK in 2012, early yeah. 2012, yeah. Um, I used to work with Matt a lot and do a lot of projects, such as the time lapses. I couldn't build a dirt house at all. Um, it was awful. You couldn't build the dirt house. No, no he awful. couldn't do anything. It was like had wood in it and wall. In it was he was uh, terrible. I kept and using uh, the wrong block. <laughs> yeah, after practicing a bit. That's the thing is when you build around other people who are good or who have got a little bit of skill because they've been doing it for uh, and learned from other people. You kind of that rubs off on you a little bit. Or even friends. Yeah. Building with friends is so much more fun than building by yourself. Yeah, you definitely. Get, you get to switch ideas around. You know, combined what your techniques and different building styles and your experiences. And eventually, you can make something like Mage City or even an epic adventure. Yeah. That's how we all started, by the way. Like, we just got a friend, yeah. started building together, and then it grew. It grew into more, more friends. More yeah. friends for everyone. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so I think there's one more slide for us to talk about, right? Two, Two more. Okay, yeah, cool. Great. Do you want me? So yeah, you so can I, talk. So yeah. I just go on one? Yeah, go on. All right, so. Uh, Who's thinking of like starting to build an adventure map? Has anyone like got any ideas all of a sudden? Like, you know, oh cool, I got this idea for a story. So you're going to start to build an adventure map? Sorry? I restarted a couple, but I have some more ideas. Okay, he restarted a couple, but he has some more ideas. That's good, okay? Because no one began by just making a great adventure map. You know, we always we always start building something and then we look at it and think, oh, that's not that good, actually. And then you restart and you make something better. Um, happened many, many times. I bet you have a million yeah. unreleased maps. I have like 12 million. <laughs> I just wanted to up you. I have about five that I've still got a concept for. But I, I mean, that's the thing, though. You have those concept stages where you just start messing around and you're like, oh, let's, this sounds kind of good and this will look kind of good and then ends up just never turning into anything. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, to begin making a map, you have to come up with a concept. Now, let's not get too technical, all right? A concept is just an idea. Lots of right? ideas. It could be one, yeah. it could be many. Lots of ideas that comes together. So may maybe you're sitting there and you think, I want to make an ma adventure map based around collecting someone's diary pages, right? You find their page one, 
and then you, you know, walk along a little bit and find a page three. That itself is an idea, and that's where you can start from, all right? From that, you can develop it, so maybe go in, oh, um, let's make it a bit of a challenge, and to get this diary page, you need to do this mini game or this parkour. Yeah, so maybe the guy right in the pages went into a dungeon, del he went dungeon delving, and he ended up getting into a lot of trouble, and then uh, discovered some sort of life-threatening crystal, uh, you know, really cliche stuff, but like, you know, it, it just it gra goes from there. It builds up. You, you might have a bad idea, but, yeah. you know, you have the basis. And from there, you can always modify And from it. there, you've got your theme now. Yeah. Dungeon delving, right? Well, what kind of dungeon? Maybe it's like a, a pyramid or a, a swamp dungeon or, you know. Underground? Like yeah, deep, on, deep, underground? Yeah, underground. Or in the sky. Ooh. Ooh. Or the sky, a sky dungeon. And there you go. You've already got your, your concept and your theme, right? So what kind of gameplay is it, and what's the theme is, right? An implementation. That's essentially building, yeah. it, doing the cool thing. That's planning out the, ro uh, the route. Yeah. I mean, I always think the best way to start this off would be like a drawing. Like even if it's just squares saying, this is where I want them to start, this is where I want them to end up, and then figuring out those kind of the stop marks in between, and then going through that and building those sections. Because if you just start randomly building things without a plan, you're probably going to end up with a bunch of stuff you're going to have to not use and you're going to waste. So yeah. Ever so often you might come up with something nice, but you know, drawing is awesome. Get a piece of paper. Honestly, as, you know, as the new generation, we've come so used to just sitting on our computer. Get off your computer, get a piece of paper and a pen and literally draw your idea. Yeah. Like just draw some buildings, draw some like, you know, what you want your dungeon to look like maybe inside. Even if you can't draw well, just doing a rough sketch, as in, this is where we start, and then you have to walk 100 blocks, and this is where the next thing is, and yeah. then the next thing. Are you good at drawing? Uh, I used to do art, so I guess uh, so. Okay. <laughs> Are you? Not really. Yeah, I'm terrible. But like, as long as you can just whip up something with a few lines, and you know, if it makes sense. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it really helps like, just to, to solidify the idea in your head along by just drawing it. Along with this, um, when you build something, no matter how bad it is, keep it. No, yeah, that's a good point, yeah. Don't delete it. It could be awful, it could be terrible, but you might be able to change the idea, you might be able to improve it. For example, Christmas Adventure 2, we built a town that we were gonna use for a minigame. We decided to scrap it because it didn't look too well. It was meant to be used for the finale. Uh, a few days later, I spoke to Slamakel. He used it for his animation, which was the Spleg tournament. Uh, have you guys, anyone seen that? Slam Cow's animation, uh, I think it was a game of Spl well, a game of Spleef, actually. Yeah, yeah. That came out of a map that wasn't going to be used. So anything you make, keep it. Because so everything can be made better at the end of the day. And it's an idea, that can be a concept, and you can iterate it on that and make it better. Even if you don't like it, someone else might. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I guess the next thing is gameplay. 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 Gameplay comes from uh, a divide between your original idea and testing. Um, because you don't know if your map is actually gonna be fun until you've tried it, right? There's a lot of testing, <laughs> constantly tweaking, as well as making sure it works, yeah. after all. And I think as well for us, because we like to make things look good, sometimes that visual can r almost ruin the gameplay and you have to kind of turn that back or change the gameplay to work with that, especially when you have to kind of redesign something. It can completely change the gameplay in that area, like completely. So it's always a, a difficult balance between aesthetics and gameplay and like that balance. So that's always a fun, fun challenge. So when, when I say testing, right, it, it's literally finish your app, make sure the redstone's in, play it. Is it fun? Okay, if it's not fun, then you've got a problem. Try and figure something out. And the best way sometimes is to just get a couple of friends, give it to them, and just watch them play it without saying anything. You don't want right? to be biased. Yeah. I, you want to you love your map, so you'll be like, oh, yeah, this is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, that's the worst thing you can do when you give someone a map is go, oh, by the way, this is amazing. And uh, oh, uh, don't worry about the, like, the bit at the middle that's like bad. Uh, I'll sort that out later, but this part's really amazing. And that, oh, but that part, don't do that. No, that's, right? that's not useful. Because the players that are going to play your map don't have that from you. So you want to see some sort of le legitimate reaction to your map. What I used to do 
is I literally made myself invisible and I sat on a server with the people playing the map and I just watched and listened to them on TeamSpeak. I didn't say anything, all right? And just by like watching their reactions to bits, you know, seeing if they get annoyed by something or they really like something or they're like, oh man, that puzzle was awesome. We want more of that. Then that says so much about your map. And then from that, you can learn how to make better gameplay. Did cool. I, did I, I like that. cover that? That was yeah. great. All right. Yeah, awesome. I think another thing, just touching on gameplay slightly, is a lot of the time you can become a little bit repetitive in your ideas. Like a lot of people are like, oh, let's do parkour again. Or, again. oh, let's do this again, let's do that again. For an epic adventure, we, we started putting more parkour in because they were really bad at it, and that was funny. Um, but a lot of the time you have to come up with these new ideas, and I think when there's a, like an epic adventure, there's four dungeons in there, and it's huge, and you have to keep coming up with these different creative challenges. Mixing gameplay up is always really cool. So if you, in the first dungeon, you teach people a technique, you teach them something that they're gonna have to use later in a much more challenging way, and it's about that ramping up. I think it's not necessarily difficult or I increasing difficulty, it's just kind of letting the players be engaged in that kind of challenge and actually learning things, and that would be a really good kind of like benefit from them. That they'll, they'll like that. Players will like the fact that they're learning to be better. So that's always a really useful thing to have in a map. Also, remember your target audience. Yeah. You don't want to make the game too easy or too kid-friendly if you want 16-year-olds playing it. You want to keep it for that audience. Uh, no one likes a map where they can't get past the first level. Remember that. Maybe yeah, level definitely. five or level six. That's better. a very good point. Yeah. But ramp your difficulty. Yeah. That, that's what all games nowadays do. Okay, maybe, maybe some indie games like start off really hard, but a lot of games, a lot of the AAA games, they start off really easy, and then it's a slow ramp, and then it just kind of like, you know, goes like that in the end. That's the kind of thing you want to aim for, all right? Make that player really enjoy your map first before they get annoyed by it, all right? Because otherwise, you just lost them straight away, and it's just like, oh. I don't want to play it because it's too hard. Yeah. Help. <laughs> uh, okay. Last one. One more. Yeah. What are we talking? Oh, we're talking about cool things. These are really cool because there's no pictures. I know, right? That's, that must be the best bit. Okay, so these are the more like, uh, this is once your map's been finished. You've actually finished it. You're kind of, you, you want to get it out there and get some response on it. Um, these are the kind of points that you want to remember. Um, so, okay, maybe the first point's a bit more about building the map. When I, seamless experience, what does that mean? It's, it's going from point A to B without, uh, and feeling like you've been on that journey all the way, all right? And not been kind of distracted by something that will take you out of the map, like a bug, okay? I'm gonna use that as a, as, as, a, as a big example. A bug is destroying your seamless experience because then it's suddenly, oh, ah, ah, this is a map that's been redstoned and I, I can see the redstone because there was a bug and blah, blah, blah. You know, that's, that's destroying someone's experience, okay? Because you don't, wanna, you don't wanna make it feel like an adventure map. You wanna, feel it, you wanna make it feel like an experience. Does that make sense? I you hope that use, does. You wanna use Minecraft more as an engine to tell your story. You don't wanna use Minecraft as Minecraft. Minecraft as a game is survival. We're trying to make something else out of it, so. Seamless yeah. experience. Uh, actually, a survival games map is a great example because it's, it's just like the whole city has its kind of story and everything's there for a purpose and it builds into each other. And there's no, I, you, you know, I guess the edge of the dome, you can still see the hills, right? The outside, yeah, um, it looks like it carries on. I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate when I see an adventure map and they've kind of put an invisible wall that you can't pass with a barrier block, and beyond that invisible wall, it's, it's just the dark blue. And it's just like, what is that? This makes it feel like I'm in sort of like a little theme park or something, not an adventure map. So that's another example of breaking the seamless experience. Invisible walls, don't do them! Well, Sorry. Do you want to tell that to all don't game developers <laughs> at the moment? Yeah, exactly. I've seen it in a lot of games as well, yeah, and it's yeah. terrible. It just, it makes you realize that you're actually just in like a little built map floating in the middle of nowhere not an actual ground. Trap you know? like Joffrey, yeah? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Trap like Joffrey. Trap like Joffrey, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what I tend to do with invisible walls is I tend to 
uh, either put, put uh, kind of a, an obstruction there, right? Remember, people can't pass fences, right? So let's maybe put some fences there. But a backdrop is always something nice because a backdrop makes it feel like you're in a city or uh, in the middle of like a jungle or something, you know, somewhere that you can't reach, but it looks like the map itself, okay? So that's, you know, that's kind of what I'm talking about when I'm on that point. When selling your map. No, you're not talking about money. No. No. no it's not money. Selling your map is selling the idea of the map and wanting people to play it. Making someone want to play your map. Exactly, yeah. Uh, you want to get the correct attention. You don't want to be told, oh, have you played this map? It's so bad. Oh, there's so many bugs and it doesn't make sense and the games are terrible. That's the worst kind of attention you'll get because no one will play your map. Yeah. So make I'm sure when you decide to start showing off your map to the public, put it on Planet Minecraft, other file and sharing websites, it's finished. And you've tested it, and you like your product. If you like your product, and you've got other people's opinions, your friends, people that haven't played the map before, then you're pretty good to go, I would say. Um, well, on the point of selling your map, making people want to play them, I always see, right, so I started out on the Minecraft forum. Does anyone use the Minecraft forum to like find maps, upload maps? Okay, good. Minecraft forum was the place I started with Paladin's Quest uh, three years ago. Uh, I put the, the map on there and I said, okay, it's available to download, blah, blah, blah. Um, but the thing people do wrong a lot is not include screenshots or yeah, a story. Yeah, what is up map. with that? Like, how can yeah. you release a map with no screenshots? Why is anyone going to click your map? Like, yeah. No one's going to download your map because there's like a thousand out there, a million maybe, you know, like what, what makes yours more special than someone else's? And it's going to be your screenshots, okay? And, and maybe the story that you put behind your map, like hype it up. Don't ruin the story. Don't tell them the ending. Don't be like, you know, oh, you should play my map because you killed a bad guy at the end. Well, <laughs> isn't that every movie as well <laughs> yeah. as like every game? Um, so, you know, put a screenshot, hype the story up. You know, maybe it's a mystery. You know, you're an adventurer that discovers a diary page. I keep going back to this horrible idea. Don't do it. <laughs> I but, think I you know, everyone's going to make it. You start now. delving dungeons. What do you find in the dungeon? You know, hype it up. Like, oh, my God, what am I going to find in that dungeon? I'm going to click that and find out. All right? And maybe put some, like, cool screenshots of, like, the puzzles that you might be doing. Or what does a dungeon look like? Because people are there for a sense of adventure. Okay? And if they can see that your adventure maps looks like adventure, then they're going to play it. All right? And that's what I'm talking about when selling your map. Make sure your thread or your Planet Minecraft page looks good. That is an incredibly big part of making a map. What it looks like to the outside world. Yeah. And not only that, which is the third point now, is don't forget why you're doing it. Because if you're just doing it for even like the publicity or something, you're going to just... That's, it's not going to be good. It's, you're doing it wrong. You should do it for yourself and also the people who are going to enjoy it. Because yeah. if you just do it for like the fact of, oh, this might get me some attention or something like that, you're probably bound to fail anyway. It's like destined to not be good. You want to make sure that you've got passion in it and that will come across to the people who end up playing it because they'll see how much hard work and how much time and how much effort has gone into it. You can't ever lose sight of that because if you do, then that's it. That's it, really. So, If you do this as a hobby... Uh, remember, it's a hobby. Obviously, what I would actually suggest is do it in your spare time. It's good to be dedicated to a cause, but if it's starting to consume your life to the point where you're only doing this, no. It, it needs you, to be a balance. You, you're going to ruin it if you only do it and focus on this map. It's, it's not going to be good. Sometimes you need a break. You need to reassess why you're doing yeah. it. What's the reason? Because you're going to burn yourself out after the first week or month, and then you're never going to come back to it. So, it's a great feeling when you've put a lot of hard work into something and someone comes to you and tells you it was amazing and thank you. All right, that's why you're doing it, okay? Just for pure enjoyment from other people. So, that goes into what happens if people start liking it. So, what happens if you upload your map and you, you release it? <laughs> you should release it. It doesn't matter if, it's, you know, if you're not happy with it. Maybe just, you know, give it a quick release, see what people say. I think 
Okay, we'll go into that in the next point. But what happens if people start liking your map? You're going to start getting comments on your thread. You know, maybe people have problems with your map. Maybe they like it. Listen to them, right? Respond to them. If people really like your map, thank them. You know, make them feel like, give them a bit of satisfaction for liking your map. You know, just, oh, thank you, man. That means a lot to me that you like my map. You know, and then you might eventually have a fan that will then follow your next map and your next one and your next one, and they'll tell their friends about it, and their friends about it, and et cetera. So, and then you've, you know, you might even build a little community around your maps, I don't know. Everyone it's all, it's random, you know? Everyone has to start from somewhere, so the main thing is, if someone likes your map, don't go, ha ha ha, of course, it's my map, I'm so good, yeah, in your face. Yeah, be humble about it. Don't rub it in. Respect your fans. Definitely. But sometimes, your fans can go the other way and be like, or I didn't like this, or I didn't like that. And you know, that can sometimes be really challenging or a really difficult thing to accept and deal with. But you know, you have to use that, especially for the ne either the next version or the next map you do, you have to kind of take that criticism on board and kind of fix that and make sure it doesn't happen again. There seems to be a trend with sequels. Yeah. No one likes sequels, really. Everyone's like, oh, the original was better because it had this and that. Yeah. Has anyone like tried to get a friend to play their map and then they didn't like it? Does anyone release something that someone didn't like and they might have come back with some horrible... No one wants to admit it. I have. All right. You have. <laughs> you haven't? No, I've had lots of things, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah I've, I've got right. awful criticism yeah. like yeah. before. I've Absolutely. Ha I've had, oh, uh, the first series was better. You should have done it like this. We did that last year. We yeah. tried something new. Sometimes criticism is just rubbish and you've just got to realize who's rubbish and who isn't. But a lot of the time, criticism is great. Some of the, actually, you know, some of the worst criticism, there's always a reason behind it. Yeah. Right? Why did that guy get so angry about my map? You know, maybe he's not clever enough to tell you why, but you can, you know, find, you know, somehow discover yourself. Yeah. And you, en you end up learning, you end up making better maps because of criticism. With negative comments, never go, oh, I'm going to ignore him because I don't like him. If you said something, read it. You know, think about what he said. Is it valid? Are people, other people complaining about it? Should I listen? Should I make the modification in the future? Don't go, oh, I don't like him, so his view is not important. It's one of the worst things you can do. Don't ignore your criticism. Never. Otherwise, you become a very bad person. Although constructive criticism is way better than constructive just... Constructive criticism is, is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, Love great. it. I love that. That's the best. Okay, so last point. Last point. How to work with others. So the reason that's on there is because all three of us have worked in teams. And yeah. working in teams is not the same as working solo at all. It actually brings some complications. And benefits. Like. And benefits. And yeah. friends. More, more benefits than complications. And a lot of friends. Right. Yeah. yeah. But uh, what I've seen a lot is when, I mean, I think I used to do it as well, uh, when I went from solo to team, um, is that I kind of keep my vision inside me, right? And I don't tell anyone, all right? That's the worst thing you can do. If someone's helping you on your adventure map, or a map, I'm just going to say map. If someone's helping you on your map, it's great if they also share the same vision, because then you start thinking like each other, and you start, you know, actually making golden stuff. So that's the hardest part, is to try and figure out why you're making your map, what's the point of it, what are you trying to achieve, what, are you, what kind of feeling are you trying to give the player. Um, and then if the other person working with you gets all that same stuff, then that's what, that's what teamwork is, all right? I think, I think that's beautifully wrapped up, it's great. Um, with me, I used to work a lot in teams, and then I start doing a lot of stuff solo. But yeah. what I mean by solo is not, I wasn't part of you know, the Fire UK or the Knox crew. Um, I'd still be working with a team of my friends, but it was a, more of a gathering of people I had met through working with these teams. So even though I wasn't part of an official build team or doing this or that, I still spoke to the people that I was part of the build teams with, and we still exchanged ideas, and they helped me. So even if you don't think, oh, I don't have a lot of friends that will help me with it, you might find some, and if you can't go in a building for a reason, you might know one or two people. You know, you could do your Ad own project. Advertise on the forums. Yep. That's how I started. Just ask, hey, does someone want to help me build this map? I have this amazing idea. Come help as me. As long as you sell it. Exactly. You yeah. know, put some pictures. Excite them. Like, oh, wow, I want to work on that. Even drawings. Yep. Even drawings. Shows you've put 
time and thought into it. Questions? Yeah, yeah we questions. can do like maybe a few questions. Maybe we've got five minutes or so for, for questions, so sure. that's cool. Yeah. All right, Q and A time. So, so raise okay, your hands I'll up I'll high. Run around, we'll come around. Uh, Nox is gonna run around. I'm gonna sit down. Lol. Hi. I'm currently working on a uh, open world adventure map that I want to provide on a server. So my question is for quests and NPCs, would you recommend using command blocks or uh, a server plugin? Um, I can actually answer this one. Um, Christmas Adventure was done completely in command blocks. There are no plugins used for it. Uh, so the way I like to do my maps, I've built some maps for Minecraft Realms. I've done TNT run in Minecraft Realms, completely vanilla. And I've also done Memory Battle, if you guys have played it. Um, it was requested, so we put it on. Those were actually inspired from a Christmas Adventure. Completely command block 1.8, the recent one. The last one was 1.7. I like doing stuff in command blocks, but I've also done server stuff. So it depends. If the plugin's good, server stuff is amazing. It runs a lot easier if you know what you're doing. But for an amateur, for someone that you know just want to have fun in a hobby and you're doing it yourself, look into command blocks and redstone. There's a lot of tutorials and it's a lot more fun if you get it working. Just bear in mind, versions of Minecraft may break it. So it when you yeah. say, this is my map, please state what version you built it in. But that's a learning process. Yeah. Yeah. Um, basically, whatever you're most comfortable with, right? It, you can do it in both, honest. I've seen maps that have done yeah. NPC speaking Likewise. in command blocks, and it works fantastically, just as long as the story's there, you know? Um, okay, more questions? Yes, sir. Do you, usual, do you usually use mods in maps? Do we usually use mods in maps? It, it totally depends, doesn't it? Like, if we're making something that is in nature, a modded series or a modded map or something like that, we'll use them. You know, if we need something that's really cool or if it's something that's a little bit different, we might add a mod in there. But a lot of the time, we kind of use like redstone or command blocks to kind of enhance what we've already built. Um, you've done stuff with modded stuff. You've done Mayanite, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. So Mayanite, the series I've done recently, that was very heavily modded. So there was everything in there from Galacticraft to, you know, everything everything really, could, you know, power systems and all that kind of stuff, so. I think this actually brings a good point uh, about the ease of someone playing your map. You don't really want something really difficult to install. Like, what I find with mods, if, you know, let's talk about adve adventure maps. Are you trying to make an adventure map? Okay, yeah. Um, if you want someone to play your adventure map, they're less likely to play it if there's extra things to download. All right, if it's just a simple one-click download, just pop it in your saves folder, then that's beautiful, people want that. That's really easy to install, you know, and great, I'm straight into the game. But if you then say, oh, but you need this mod, and this mod, and this mod, you're gonna get a less percentage of players, all right? You still might get some players, and you still might get people be being like, wow, this is awesome, it's totally worth the effort to install, but you're gonna get less, all right? That's what I find with complicating your um, install process. All right. Anyone else? Turn on. How, how do you manage uh, your maps that you make? Uh, do you do them all on single player or multiplayer servers? And how do you kind of save your maps as you go along? How do we manage our maps? Do we put them on single player uh, or servers or, you know, manage, how, do, how do we release Manage them? when building or manage when releasing? I think it either way, I mean, yeah. we could talk about both. I mean, I suppose building, it's always on a server because it's us, but I mean, yep. sometimes we, we always like to make sure that our maps can be played in single player as well. We use certain plugins on our servers when building, um, the actual building side, such as World Edit and Voxel Sniper which let us create large structures or create custom terrain very fast. Um, however, for example, the Christmas Adventure series, when that was being built, there wasn't a 1.8 version of Bucket or Spigot out at the moment. So to do all the command block stuff, we needed to move it across to single player. So all the redstone, the command blocks was done in single player. And if we had to move any builds across, we had to use third party software to grab it and stick it into the map. So it's a mixture. It depends exactly what like what you have to do and what version of Minecraft you're working on, or if you're using certain server-side plugins. It, it, it's a mess, but it's all on preference. 
depends what your needs are at the time. Yeah, it, on releasing it, it depends what you're releasing it for. You know, are you making an adventure map for single player, or you're making it for several people to play, or did someone approach you and say, "Hey, I've got a server. Do you want to make a map for it?" You know, it, it all depends on what the what your point is, right? Um, so yeah, if you make a multiplayer map. Well then, you you're gonna have to make sure that your players actually have a server that they can install it on, and you better tell them how to do it, right? Give them a little install in, uh, installation instructions how to how to put it on your server and play it. Link it to the wiki. Link it to a wiki. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think that's literally all the time we have today. Yeah. But that's been yeah. absolutely fantastic. Thank you all so much for coming out and listening to us. Thank you, everyone. See ya.